Christiani, today in Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at a device called a Flentner rotor. This was the invention of Anton Flentner, who was a German physicist who, who specialized in aviation. In the 1920s, he removed the masts from an old sailing ship and replaced the sails with two vertical cylinders as a means of powering it. The boat was still dependent on wind, but the spinning columns used the Magnus effect to push the boat forward. In recent times, it has been tried with a few smaller boats, and on occasion, with a few larger ones. His invention also found its way into aviation, where the rotors were able to successfully replace the wings of an airplane and provide enough lift to get the airplane up in the air. However, this idea never really took off, except for a few experimental models. The Flintner rotor worked in air and in the sea. Now let's try it on land. The spinning cylinder is going to use a Magnus effect to drive this cart forward. So let's take a quick look. My source of wind is going to be this shot vac. All right, I've turned it on and the rotor is spinning. Now let's add some air. Now the car itself is made out of styrofoam. It has a battery holder in the bottom with two AA batteries. The wooden frame gives the rotor a little bit more stability. The rotor itself was made out of foam with two CD stabilizers driven by this DC motor and the wheels have rubber bands on it to give it traction and keep it from slipping sideways. Even with the rubber on the tires we can still see some sideways drifting. Now I thought it'd be interesting to replace the round rotor with a couple variations, so let's try this square one. Now, something else we can try is this soda bottle. Put that on the motor, and let's add the supports here. There we go. Turn it on, let's see how it works. Now the movement of this car is actually an example of Bernoulli's principle, which describes how a speed of a fluid actually causes a decrease in pressure, something you can test at home. Try blowing air across a piece of paper. Moving air exerts less pressure on top of the paper, so the stationary air underneath it exerts enough pressure to lift it up. The force moving the bottle is actually an example of Bernoulli's principle, but due to the spin, it's more commonly referred to as the Magnus effect. This describes the forces applied to a spinning object as it travels through a moving fluid. Here's a visible model of the Magnus effect using smoke in a spinning object. The red arrow indicates the direction of the Magnus force. Kicking a soccer ball usually spins, which helps gives it lift. But if you kick the ball with a sideways spin, you can get it to curve in one direction or the other, depending on which way it spins. The coffee cup flyer that I showed in a previous video gets tremendous lift due to the Magnus effect. Now if you want to try a simple demonstration of the Magnus effect at home, all you need to do is take a piece of paper and roll it up into a cylinder and tape it so that it holds it in place. Now if I drop this, it simply falls straight down. But if we cause it to spin, well, watch what happens this time. Ready? You'll notice that it came back towards me. That's because it's spinning in this direction, which creates a greater pressure on this side, 
than it does on this side, so the Magnus effect is actually pushing it towards me. Now if I spin it in the other direction, what do you think will happen? Now let's see. It goes away from me. Greater pressure on this side, less pressure on this side, so it's going to move away from me. The spinning rotor on the cart feels the same force. The higher wind speed equals lower pressure, so the cart's actually pushed from the opposite side of the rotor. Now it would be interesting to see a difference between the rotor spinning versus stationary. So first we'll try it with the spinning rotor. As long as the air is moving at the same speed on both sides of the rotor, the pressure is reduced by the same amount so it doesn't move. So we see quite a difference between the rotor spinning versus stationary. But we can actually get this cart to move simply by channeling the air right at the very front edge of that rotor or at the back edge. So let's see that. So we can move that cart even with the rotor stationary. Now let's try the other rotors in a couple other shapes and see if we get the same results. Notice that it only moves when I channel air to one side or the other. So even if the cylinder isn't spinning, we see movement due to the Coando effect. Fluids tend to fall along the curve of a surface. And as they do, the pressure decreases as the speed of that fluid increases. We can see this behavior in a simple experiment you can try at home. Get a stream of water and simply hold a curved surface to it. Notice how the stream follows the curve of the can? We can see the same behavior with the larger surface. The curve of the water becomes a bit more pronounced. And if we try it with the larger surface, there'd be a larger area that would feel a decrease in pressure due to that moving fluid. So with the larger surface on the cart, it becomes easier to move with the stream of air. It would be like adding a bigger sail to a sailboat. But with it still, wind would hit both sides of the cylinder with equal amounts of pressure. That's why the cylinder has to be spinning. Now we may not see too many practical applications for the flatter rotor, but we can see the results of the Magnus effect in all sorts of areas. Throwing a curve in baseball, hitting a slice with a golf ball, a spinning tennis ball will curve, as will a volleyball if you give it a sideways spin. Just don't expect to see it used in cars anytime soon. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed my little video on the Fletner Rotor. As always, I want to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.